Monish Pavrai has broadened this portfolio in Turkey with two new holdings. In this video we will be looking at Coca-Cola içecek and from now on I will be calling it CCI. Also if you don't wanna miss my video on the other business please make sure to subscribe. Alright then, first of all let's look at this video where Monish says he owns CCI and talks about Turkish stock market. I will leave the link to this whole presentation but the part I put on my video is a little long around 3 minutes and I wanted to include the whole section about Turkey. Let's watch it. All my energy behind a place like Turkey, I think I should spend a lot more time. The in the investors that I would be buying stock from in Turkey. So the Turkish stock market is mostly held either by insiders or foreigners. 80% is held that way and that doesn't trade. The other 20% which is held by the locals, etc. turns over every nine days. And for most locals, nine days is too much. They want to invest at 10 and be done at two, four hour holding period. And Buffett says that stock market is a mechanism to transfer wealth from the active to the inactive. And couldn't be, and these gamblers, they're not investors speculators or gamblers sold me resas at two and a half percent of liquidation value because they couldn't be bothered what the companies were. That's not part of the equation at all. When you're buying at 10 o'clock and selling at two o'clock, you are not running any intrinsic value calculations. You're just trying to have some kind of psychology that somebody will pay you something more than what you paid or whatever. And uh, so I think that because of the, the nature of the investors, and also that the geopolitical and all of that, that everyone's exited. I still think like 95% or 97% of Turkey is not investable. But there's the 3 to 5% where their revenues are in euros or dollars. Inflation is a tailwind rather than a headwind. And people aren't interested because the baby got thrown out of the bathwater. So like we have a Coke bottler in Turkey. We've got a company that imports all the VW brands and controls most of those dealerships in Turkey. These are really good businesses. And the gamblers will give it to you at great prices. So that's why I think I should put more time and energy. Monish, the foreign ownership you just mentioned, why doesn't that trade? I'm just saying institutional investors are not going in and out every... They did go out, I think in 2018, 2019, 2017. There was a mass exodus, mm -hmm. right? So there were Templeton funds sold me races mm -hmm. at two and a half percent of liquidation. I don't know what John Templeton thinks of that in his grave. Okay. <laughs> but they're supposed to have the framework. But some guy in New York says exit and then they exit Turkey. So that sort of thing happens. And so, yeah, I think that the institutions in a place like Turkey, I think they have a somewhat longer horizon, but I think they get, they also get spooked out. I think at this point, everyone and their brother has left. So, the, but the thing is that the stock market's kind of like a theater. Right? Every seat has to be occupied. And so every share has to be held by someone. So if you are exiting, it's like a burning theater. You have to find somebody who will take your ticket and go back in and sit in the theater. And if the theater's on fire, that ticket is not going for a hundred dollars. You pay to get that seat. You'll take 10 cents. And you're enjoying the movie. So that's good. I think that I got to make sure I'm in the part of the theater, which is not going to get affected. The theater, the theater is on fire, but there's, <laughs> like, there's a balcony where it's not going to get there or something. So we all know Coca-Cola, Buffett's famous investment, and it is probably one of the world's top three or top five mod. The business is as durable as it gets. People have been loving it so much that Coca-Cola has been around for the last 130 years. 13 decades. But at the same time, all investors know that and the variations are high. If you want to own Coca-Cola at current prices, you have to pay around 24 times earnings. That looks pricey. But what if you could invest in a business which enjoys the same nomination but also priced at only 6 times earnings? That is possible through investing in a Turkish Coca-Cola butler, CCI. Also, a funny note here, Coca-Cola's former CEO Muhtar Kent was a Turkish businessman and served for almost a decade. So CCI is a multinational beverage company. They operate in 11 countries and Turkey is where the company is based and the others are Countries like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Iraq, etc. They serve 
430 million people and they have 870,000 sales points. Their revenue is $2.5 billion which equals to their market cap so their price to sales ratio is just 1 and they have $526 million EBITDA which makes their price to EBITDA ratio a little under 5. In 2005 CCI was only operating in Turkey but since then they have expanded to 10 more countries and their sales volume is up 4 times in 2021 compared to 2005. Their EBITDA in the same period is up 22 times but keep in mind that dollar against lira is also up around 12 times in that same period. In 2006 Turkey was making up 81% of the company's total sales volume. That number is now down to 42%. Another thing I wanna highlight is the company wants return on invested capital to be higher than the cost of capital which is very important to me. Because it shows that one, company understands capital allocation and two, they won't be doing stupid accusations or unnecessary investments that destroy shareholder value. Instead, they are trying to create more for the shareholders. This graph here shows some of the countries CCI is operating in. I wanna highlight the fact that they have Pakistan, which have a population of 225 million people. And another point here is that the sales volume in Uzbekistan is up 40% year over year. Looking at their growth opportunities, the industry is expected to grow 15% CAGR by 2025. And looking at the non-alcoholic ready to drink market, in the countries that CCI operate in, they have almost 30% market share, which means that there are still room to grow even without the industry's overall growth accounted for. Another point I wanna highlight is CCI is extremely good at operating and here they have a study in 2019 their distributor satisfaction survey score was 89% in Turkey. Looking at their international results their sales volume is up almost 20% year over year in third quarter of 2022. As a whole CCI's sales volume is up 16.4% year over year. So far we have taken a look at the company in general. But now let's dig deeper into their financials and see their ownership structure, margins, cash flows and the balance sheet. Here we have the company's shareholder structure. Anadolu FS, which you may know as a basketball team, but actually it's Turkey's Heineken, owns 50.3%. Then we have the Coca-Cola Corporation owning 20% and considering Buffett owns 9.2% of the Coca-Cola Corporation, we can say that Buffett has a stake in CCI as well. Then we have another Turkish firm owning 1.5% and the rest with 28.1% is the free float. So now looking at their balance sheet, CCI has a little more debt than their cash. But 96% of their debt is with fixed interest rate, which I think is incredibly good. Their net debt over EBITDA in third quarter of 2022 is at 0 0.7. So their EBITDA is bigger than their net debt and the average maturity of their debt is 3.8 years. So overall, I think this is an outstandingly strong balance sheet. Now looking at their EBITDA margins, from 2017 to 2021, it went from 17.6% to 21.3% and it has been very stable during this time period, which I think is just as important. And their free cash flow yield in the last 4 years has been around 10%. ECI is also a dividend paying company. But these numbers are in Turkish Lira, so I think it is better to look at their yield and it looks like assuming 2% yield is reasonable in the next couple of years. And here we have their credit ratings from S&P and Fitch. So the S&P's rating is double D plus and Fitch's triple B minus. The outlook from S&P is negative and from Fitch it's positive. Now looking at what they say, the strengths of the company is leading market shares in growing markets well-known brands, very low debt leverage, strong operational profitability and sound cash generations. These were the ones I found very important. And looking at the challenges, Fitch says weak operating environment and SMP says rising risks to Turkey's economy with extreme currency volatility and rising inflation emit mixed policy signals. So both of the challenges to me look like the macro risks. They are not necessarily about the CCI but the economy that CCI is operating in. 
And as a bottom-up investor, rather than a top-down investor like Ray Dalio, I think that these are the kinds of challenges that I would rather have than the micro challenges. For example, high leverage, which CCI doesn't have. Now, this is their presentation, just like almost everything before, and it is a roadmap of their capital allocation progress and we can see all the things that an investor would want to see and if they can stick to this plan it can bring great results for investors and finally we have here the price of two and a half liter coke in turkey so far in 2022 in january it was at seven and a half lira and recently it was as high as 24 liras it's more than tripled in price but cci expects sales volume to be flattish in Turkey, so consumers do not drop coke out of their baskets despite rising prices, which is incredible to see as an investor. Before closing, I know that this video has been very bullish and I have to remind you that I am a stock owner as well. The bull case is obvious, the company's mod is almost as big as it can get, their valuations are cheap with free cash flow yield being at double digits. Their balance sheet is very decent and their net debt to their EBITDA is around 1. The business has been expanding in areas where I expect the consuming of coke to rise rather than to fall like in western nations due to health concerns and their total addressable market is still giving them lots of room to grow. However, owning individual stocks always carry risks and in this case the most obvious risk is macro concerns about turkey in general inflation is at almost triple digits and the currency has been unstable and turkey is still the biggest market and the home of the cci as monish said everyone and their brother have left the country but i believe the value is there so please let me know what you think in the comment section and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.